Hi, um, welcome to my YouTube channel, um, Catch Me If You Cancer. My name's Shelley and I have decided to share my story for all my friends and for my family and for any of you out there that's watching to raise awareness of the kind of cancer that I've been diagnosed with and to hopefully prevent any of you watching to ever have to share a story like mine. That would really make me happy. All your love and support and sh has given me strength to share the story. I know a lot of you are very, very interested in it and are behind me 100%. And I just want to share positivity and light to anybody that thinks that when you're given the odds that I've been given, to give up it's not an option that life is over and I was there and it's taken me a lot of strength and positivity and changing my mindset to get where I am today but if I could spread that as well as cancer awareness about melanoma to everybody that will listen then it's worth it so my story difficult one to talk about um 14 weeks ago, I was diagnosed with stage four melanoma, which is an aggressive and a rare form of skin cancer. Our skin is the largest organ on our body, in our bodies. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we don't check and take care of ourselves and check our moles the way that we're taught to check our breasts and our testicles and um, have, have smear tests is just completely beyond me. We're as Brits, the sun comes out, you know, we get our skin out, we burn, we're prime for skin cancer and we know nothing about it. I found out through, um, little did I know at the time, that my lymph nodes had started popping up. Um, I'd put on some weight, so I just thought it was fatty lumps. Didn't really take much notice, I wasn't really taking care of myself at the time. I, um, I just swept it under the carpet really until quite a substantial lump appeared in my breast and I thought time to go and get things checked out you know I was referred to the Windsor Breast Clinic which who were fabulous all hail goes to these guys for finding out exactly what I had so quickly I don't know where I'd be without them my first doctor told me that I was um, suffering with lipomas, which were just fatty lumps, which I thought they were. So I was in a state of euphoria, really, when we were waiting in the waiting room and we were like high-fiving each other, myself and James, my wonderful partner. But while I was there, they told me to go for a mammogram and an um, ultrasound just in case anyway. So I thought, yeah, okay, fine. It was in the ultrasound that things turned really quickly. Um, the lady that, that was doing it said very quickly that they weren't fatty lumps and she turned me on my side and five biopsies were done in quick concession and then asked me if I had moles, which I do. And one had changed years and years ago. It doesn't give me any problems, has never itched or bled or anything like that, but it, but it did change. And I, I didn't know enough about melanoma to know exactly the extent of the change and I should have got it checked out back then but the long and short of it is it's just it decided to manifest <sighs> while I was waiting for the biopsy results and of course you're still hoping that it's not cancer you know you still are it wasn't confirmed then they sent me for a CT scan quite quite urgently and then um Three days later, I got an, an urgent phone call from the clinic at, late at night to tell me to be with them um, at half nine in the morning. I was running late that morning, actually, and by the time I'd got there, I'd already had nine missed calls from the clinic, so I knew it was serious then. And that's when they confirmed that I had melanoma. I had to research that, and if you do research it, it's not a pretty sight. And I was popped into a really nice peachy coloured room with comfy seats. And I remember me and James remarking on how nice the clock was on the wall and waiting for my Macmillan nurse and life had just changed in a second. 
It wasn't until I walked out of the hospital that it hit me that I had cancer. And when I researched the cancer that I had, uh, I... Well, I, I, I can't take those the sites back. Um, Dr. Google is not something that you should. And if anybody ever has a diagnosis of anything, please do not use Google as your tool. Please. Please remember that every single case is is completely individual to you. But, uh, but of course, at the time, that's exactly what I did. He told me his words were that your cancer started in a mole and has spread all the way through your body. I still thought he'd got the wrong person. It wasn't until I was sent to Mount Vernon in Rickmansworth, which is the lead, one of the leading hospitals in skin cancer, thank goodness, under the care of Dr. Nathan, who is one of the top oncologists in Europe, I believe. I am blessed. Now it seems funny to say I'm blessed, but I am blessed when I say I'm under this, uh, under this amount of care. He chooses his own cases and he thankfully he chose mine then I realized the extent of it he confirmed that the cancer had spread to my lymph nodes my soft tissue my lungs my adrenal glands it's on my ovaries it's on my chest wall it's in both breasts so they sent me for an MRI to see if it had spread to the brain when melanoma spreads to your brain it's very hard to survive it. I knew it had because I knew that my speech had changed and my um, balance was changing. When it was confirmed that it was on my brain, and not just a little bit, I have 25 grace alone on my brain. That was the day I had to come home and tell my children And that is what I want to prevent any of you having to do ever because you never get over that. I will never get over that. My children will never get over this. And I am going to make it my plight to make sure that any of you out there that really don't take care of yourselves or think that, you know, life's over or you've got no fight left in you. I just want to be able to tell you to keep going. Keep going because your family deserve this. I had to tell my children because of the amount of cancer on my brain, we didn't know how many days I had left thinking the way I am. And the message had to come from me. And I can't go into the, the way that I told them because half of it I don't remember. But I do remember the lasting effect it's had and will continue to have for the rest of our lives. So I owe it to them because I took their childhood away in one conversation and their future and their hopes and their dreams and their naivety and their being a child. That left in one conversation. I mean, I am everything to those boys, of course, as, a, and as every mother is to their children. I owe it to them to prove to them that I will give my everything in this fight to stay with them to stay with my family my family deserve this so the long and short of it is melanoma didn't just take a little walk around my body it it took a great big hike and left breadcrumbs for its friends to follow i mean i even have tumors in my butt cheeks it's, it's funny but it's not funny um i want some i want your help in raising awareness and getting this message out there to check your skin all the time to up your sun factor that you use to watch your children in the sun stop sun baking stop using those awful sunbeds because melanoma is curable if you catch it but it's hard to catch and once it starts growing there is not a cure there has never been a cure there is some new treatments in place that I am undergoing at the moment that look like I'm partially responding. But melanoma is known for where well, you wait it out and it and you succumb to the disease. I'm not owning that. I will decide when I leave, when my time is up and I am fighting. I shouldn't be walking and talking with the amount of cancer that's in my body. So if I can do it, I want to reach other people that can. 
and I wanted to help them. This YouTube channel is dedicated to all of you out there that have shown me so much love and support. My family are going to participate. It's going to be a family channel from my family to any of your families. My sons want to come on, pop on and say hi. I think my mum is going to. Um, I want to touch base most days just to see how everyone's doing and to give some strategies about how I completely turned my mindset around. I decided to because my sons asked me if I was going to make their birthdays this year and statistically and on paper the answer was no and I remember faltering when they asked me and their faces so that day I decided to get up and have a stern word myself in the bathroom because giving up isn't an option. Your mind can, can heal you or can heal your thoughts and can, you can turn yourself around in a second and that's exactly what I did. I'm in pain every day. I wake up with I wake up and there's a little moment in my mind that I haven't got cancer and then I have and it's and I train myself every morning to get up and get out there to be the best role model that I can for those boys because if anyone can beat this I will be beating it and I want to share the journey to prevent any of any of you ever having to go through what us as a family are going through and to obviously raise awareness of melanoma so thank you for listening. It's taken me a while to do this first video um, because of the emotional impact it has and because of revisiting back some painful, painful times. I've just been recently um, told of, of bigger and newer tumours that I wasn't aware of but have always been there. So it's taken me a little while to get my head around, again, the fact that I've got a lot of work to do. Um, but my aim and this is all I will be giving out there is I will end up cancer free because that's my choice and that's what I will do. So I want to empower anybody else, be that mental health people that are struggling, domestic abuse. I want to find my tribe of warriors, men, women, children that really think or have been given news that life isn't worth going on. Um, you don't you don't curl up and take that. You don't. You own it. You manage your own thoughts and you get out there and you beat this. And if I can give you the power, anyone lis listening, the power to overcome any small things, any big things, then this story is worth sharing. And I'm getting a lot of positive feedback from everybody about how positive I am and what an inspiration I am. So I'm going to use this, these tools, I'm going to use these skills to empower other people. And to save lives, that's what I want to do. I want to end up with a campaign about melanoma and how we should be checking ourselves all the time. I want this to become a big thing. Because when it gets you, it's so aggressive, it becomes life-threatening within six weeks. So that's my story. I was given less than four months to live four months ago. And I'm sitting here telling my tale now. So it's possible. I have prolonged my life for a few more months now and that is enough to fight. So please share, please subscribe, please share this to anybody you think might help them. Please help me get the message out there and thank you for your continuous love and support and interest in my story. It really gives me strength and the courage and the confidence to share and get out there and, and spread some love. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. And now this channel is active, you'll be seeing a lot more of me. Bye.